it's grand final week how good especially when it's storm up against panthers it's gonna be so much fun and last night we had dally m so i'm gonna go through the team of the year for that and obviously a massive congratulations to jerome hughes i just pipped teddy on the final post there by one point it's pretty crazy how that one ended up but uh also shout out to teddy for an absolutely incredible year taking out fullback of the year but we'll go through the grand final my little preview and then the finals fantasy grand final there in the description guys get that form get into it and get cranking 60 odd people have already done that through discord or through the private group there so that's great guns there but this team of the year i actually can't fault it at all we have our back five in tedesco get lomax and to or definitely the two best wingers in the comp this year Get Stephen Crichton and Herbie Farnworth and, and Herbie's second half of the year especially was absolutely immense. So congrats to him. And then Stephen Crichton bringing this Dogs team into the top eight. It was perfect. I think Dearden really deserves his 5-8 slot. And you know, a lot of other seasons it might have ended up with a Munster. The only one that's probably a little bit hard done by would be Jerome Luai. But I suppose he played in a bit more of a seven role for a lot of this season with, with Cleary being out. But... Also completely fair that Dearden was able to to get that, you know, six jersey in the team of the year. Luai is the one that definitely has missed out, unfortunately, on that front. But with Hughes obviously winning, Dalham, he was probably the best player this year, I, I think anyway. Hooker, we had a Harry Grant. He actually didn't have too great of a year, to be fair. But I do think that last month or so really helped him in this race to, to get Hooker of the, of the season. You, you could definitely have a look at guys like Robson, guys like... You know, Reed Marnie, they just feel like they kind of fell off at certain points of the year. And I think Harry in a team that was winning more games than, than not, like you had Reed and, and Robson, guys like Damian Cook, have really, really good games and, and would have collected a lot of points out of that. But I just I just think with, with the Storm winning really well, for them to surprisingly only have you know a few players in this team, three in the end, with Hughes, Grant, and then Eli Katoa probably, um, you know, could almost be a little bit unders just based on how, how incredible of a season they had. So yeah, fair play to Grant. He's been absolutely incredible through the final series as well. So deserves on that front, but probably hasn't actually been his best year. Shows how good he is. Joey Tarpany, another cracking season for him paired with Adam Fenor Blake, completely fair in that, in that prop rotation. We know there's other guys like Fisher Harris and these, these types of players that, Bring, put out a lot of their best work in final series. So makes sense being a regular season award, a massive bounce back for Crichton there. And then Eli Katoa just showing his progression this year with the, with the storm, uh, not, not the roosters that apparently they've got him in here on the, on the, uh, on the NRL.com site. But yeah, Angus Crichton and Eli Katoa, very, very good seasons for them. And then Isaiah Yo, close to the best player this season, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I think it's just probably Jerome Luai that, that, that probably misses out on this side and, and how good it was. So that's the, the best 13 of the season. And we'll move on to that grand final now where we get to we do get to see a bunch of these guys. I find this so hard to tip, this grand final. You've got the Storm, who I think have been clearly the best team this season. Panthers have really just turned it on come finals time. But they didn't play their best game the other night either. So is their lack of form and their ability to, to be super consistent this season going to hurt them in the biggest game of the year. That's probably the big question for the Panthers. They have the cattle, they have the you know, the superstars, they have the workhorses, they have everything, right? But so did the Storm. And the Storm have been the most consistent team this year by far, getting the most wins, just very rarely playing poorly. You know, they had a few lapses in defense at times through the season, but that's improved dramatically. And we know that uh, the Panthers' defense is pretty strong overall. It's just you know how clicky has their attack been, especially with with Cleary returning now. They, they you know he's he's missed a lot of the year, so they do find it you know a game or two to to get sometimes to get or at least you know twenty minutes of a game. They seem to play exactly how they they want to be, and the rest of the game they do seem to struggle a little bit at times. But they're still so good, and they know how to win that they can get through these games. So I do have a 50-50 at the moment, but I probably lean slightly towards the storm based on current form. But you cannot, you know, you cannot see uh, the Panthers giving up without a fight. They have won three in a row. They've been in the fifth grand final in a row now. They have the best player in the game in Cleary. They have the best lock in the game. They have, you know, the best winger in the game. They've got one of the top, 
well, apparently not top, but second top, probably five eighth in the game in, in Jerome Luai in the best forward pack. So they've got everything that they need to win this. They just haven't really put it together apart from that first game uh, against the Roosters in that, in that first uh, finals game. So I think that story is going to be really interesting if they can come out and be a really consistent team. I think that they definitely have all the weapons to, to win this one. And then on the Storm side, if they can come out and play the attacking footy that you've seen in the last month, especially with Harry getting out of dummy half and you know, Hughes just being in there with a shot of, of picking up try after try, Harry in there with you know getting a bunch of tries as well, and, and Munster, along with Hughes, just forming that incredible combination. And, and Hughes has been the talking point this year. Does Munster put his you know, foot on this game and, and get the win for his side? Like he has done in so many massive games for both the Storm and for Queensland as well. So, yeah, you've got the some of the younger guys in the outside backs, Warbrick, Howarth there uh, up against, you know, Taruva, who's only a few years in. You've got Alamotti and obviously Tungo as well, but, you know, third year, we'll call that experience at this point when you've got uh, second year guys in, in Taruva, Warbrick, first year guy in in Howarth and second year in, in Alamotti as well. You've got uh, To'o, Edwards, these guys are absolute veterans right now, and even Pappenhausen and and Coates in this in this backline for for the Storm, and and I think the big big turning point for the Storm was last week with Pappenhausen playing his best footy of the season. So if he is on, and if he can match Edwards in some way, and I think you know they're obviously very very different players. Edwards is a, a you know, run first kind of guy. Pap probably has a little bit more better ball play. Pap's probably got that little bit extra speed off the mark but isn't going to you know, work you to a standstill of 220, 230 meters like, or 270 meters that Edwards continues to to outlay. So I just think if if Pappenhausen can can provide a little bit more spark on the attacking side and, and either set up or score himself, then Storm will be very, very tough to beat in this one. How are they going to go with managing the field position? We know that Panthers, that is their, their absolute strength and strangling teams. They don't have Nelson now as that big body through the middle. They're going to rely on guys like King, on guys like Liero, Kamakamitha, on Welch probably to play a few more minutes, and Alec McDonald there, which is a, definitely a lesser pack than that of the Panthers, but they'll rely on these guys for consistency, and we'll see how that one pay, plays out in this one for sure. There's not too much else I want to say on this front. You know, They've got a lovely bench there, Panthers as well. Guys that have been there in Lindsay Smith, in Eisenhuth, got some younger guys obviously in Schneider and Henry, but they both come in and they always do a job. Be interesting to see how Lazarus comes out. Crazy, it's his only like sixth or seventh NRL game, but he's going to get an opportunity to come out and 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 get a win in a grand final, which is just awesome for him. Really, really happy for him in that front. You've got Sorensen. Does he come back into this team? Does he come in on the bench for an Eisenhuth? Does he come in for Garner and Garner pushes back to the bench? I think he should probably play off the bench, and I do think he'll be important, whether it's through the middle or spending 20 minutes or so on that edge for Garner. I definitely think that'll that'll make a difference as well. And and what can Eli Katoa do on that right hand side after you know being in that team of the year? I think there's um yeah, he can obviously play a part along with Liam Martin on the other side in this game, that's for sure. So I just can't wait to watch it, to be honest with you. There's not much else we can say on predictions. It's gonna hopefully be a really close game. I'm gonna tip twenty to eighteen and flip a coin on whichever teams it, it falls on. If it's just based on how this season's gone exactly, the storm should fall the victor. Uh, but we know that it's not exactly uh, all it cracked, all it's cracked up to be. That one, you know, that bunch of games, footies again that it could have can happen either way, um, and yeah, it could be. It's going to be super fun. I can't wait for it. That's for sure. And now let's move to the finals fantasy. And I've done it in head to heads this week. So make sure you get your name and your email address in correctly, just like you have the previous weeks. And that's head to heads. I've gone Hughes or Cleary in that first one, which is awesome. We've then got Yo or Munster, and uh, I'll show you actually some of the responses just as a little bit of a change up for this one, just to see, you know, you might be trying to chase, to be fair. You might be 50 or 60 or 80 or points behind or something like that, and you might be pushing for a little bit of a, a point of difference. And just like you would have, you know, fantasy fantasy gold or whatever it's called there, um, to see to see break evens, to see how much how how many players have uh, are owned or brought in and stuff like that. I'll show you like that one in here. Grant versus Edwards, Katoa versus Luai, Howarth versus Tongo. It's gonna be fun. Uh, Pap or To'o 
Martin or Bloor, Fisher Harris or Liero, King or Alamotti, and then picking one emergency, Warbrick or Taruva. So it's going to be plenty of fun. But just a quick one there. The only one that is um, very much a, a whitewash is the Yo one. Outside of that, King and King and Alamotti. King's been selected more than Alamotti, but we know that you know Paul can go go nuts there. Fish and Liero are very, very close. Martin and Bloor. Martin's getting that edge there a little bit. Pappy and Toa. With Toa getting the edge in that one, which is pretty cool to see. Howarth getting the edge over Tungo. You would not have seen that at the beginning of the year. Katoa getting the edge over Luai, which I find interesting. I think that they can both go as well as each other. Grant over Edwards, also interesting. A few more people picking months. So there you go, 62 to 3 at this point. And then Cleary, 48 over Hughes, 17. So super, super fun, that one. Well, I wish you all the best of luck in trying to make the top five and get you know 10 bucks off your private group package for next year. And we'll leave it at that, guys. Thank you so much for, for being here for this one, short and sharp. And uh, yeah, enjoy the long weekend. Enjoy the final.